Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Hello, everybody. Um, we are back tonight. Uh, we have just a few things we wanted to share. Um, uh, I'm going to start with this scripture that you have right here, because we've been talking a lot, a lot about this scripture the last week. You know, we had that deal, excuse me, we had that deal happen with um, uh, Israel and the UAE with Trump and, and Jared Kushner and all that stuff. And, and now uh, Jared announces that um, uh, Israel is now for the first time ever willing to map out uh, splitting up the land with Palestine. God's not real happy with that. God's not going to be a happy camper with uh, that at no, all. No, because... Um, yeah. And that should not have happened. Yeah, absolutely. So... But it's prophetic. Now, because of these uh, news articles that have been coming up, um, we wanted to... Um, we, You know, Daniel 9.27 has come up several times. Um, now, this is a really normally... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to the regular... I think I have King James up here. Okay. Here. Um... It's kind of a tough scripture to understand. So um, I'm just going to read it, okay? And then I'm going to show you, then I'm going to tell you what it, what Aslan had gotten for us. Because Aslan actually, uh, he knows Hebrew pretty, very well, let's put it that way. <laughs> and he teaches it, so he definitely knows it well. Um, but, so verse 27 in just regular King James, okay, it says, And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. And in the midst of the week, <clears throat> he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. And for the overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate, even unto the consummation. And that, de and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. How does Joel 3 fit in with this? Ah, oh, good question. Boy. Now we're going to have a Bible study, Overcomer. <laughs> Overcomer wants to know how, how Joel 3 fits Read in. Joel 3. So you know what? Let's pull up Joel 3. Praise God. We'll, we'll, we'll do a little Bible study here first, and then I'll get into some headlines we're going to talk about, but that's okay. So let's, let's jump into Joel 3. <clears throat> okay. Let's check it out. All right. For behold, in those days and in that time, when I shall bring again the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem, I will also gather all nations and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat and will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my land. And they have cast lots for my people and have given a boy for a harlot and sold a girl for wine that they might drink. Yea, and what have ye to do with me, O Tyre and Zidon, or Zidon, and all the coasts of Palestine? Will ye render me a recompense? And if ye recompense me swiftly and speedily, will I return your recompense upon your own head? Because ye have taken my silver and my gold and have carried into your temples my goodly pleasant things, the children also of Judah and children of Jerusalem have ye sold unto the Grecians that ye might remove them far from their border. <clears throat> Behold, I will raise them out of the place whither ye have sold them and will return your recompense unto your own head. <clears throat> and I will sell your sons and your daughters into the hands, the hand of the children of Judah and they shall sell them to the Sabaeans to a people far off for the Lord has spoken it. Proclaim ye this among the Gentiles, prepare war, wake up the mighty men, let all the men of war draw near, let them come up. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's where we're at. We're eventually coming Be down to that wars and rumors and of wars. And rumors of wars. Ooh, yeah, this is the big scripture. Yep. Uh, beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say, I am strong. Praise God. Assemble yourselves and come, all ye heathen, and gather yourselves together round about. Tither ca cause thy mighty ones to come down, O Lord. <clears throat> Sorry, guys. Let me take a sip of water. Hang on. I have an idea. Why don't you take a sip of water? Yes, dear. Ha, ha, ha. Okay. That was a good idea, though, huh? 
Let the heathen be wakened and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat, for there, there will I sit to judge all the heathen round about. Put ye in the sickle, for the harvest is ripe. Ooh, now, that's very interesting, because that goes to, do you guys remember me talking about Revelation 14, that God showed me that the first fruits are as the sickle to go bring in the harvest? Very interesting. So this says, put ye in the sickle, for the harvest is ripe. Come get you down, for the press is full. The fats overflow, for their wickedness is great. Oh, this is the other one. This is the angel with the with the um, sickle. So that's not us, obviously. <laughs> multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision, for the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. The sun and the moon shall be darkened, and the stars shall withdraw their shining. Well, that's like the sixth seal. Um, the Lord also shall roar out of Zion and utter his voice from Jerusalem and the heavens and the earth shall shake, but the Lord will come. I'm sorry. The Lord will be the hope of his people and strengthen of the children of Israel. So shall ye know that I am the Lord, your God dwelling in Zion, my holy mountain. Then shall Jerusalem be holy and there shall be no, and there shall no strangers pass through her anymore. And it shall come to pass in that day that the mountains shall drop down new wine and the hills shall flow with milk, with milk and the rivers, um, where am I? And the rivers of Judah shall flow with waters and a fountain shall come forth of the house of the Lord and shall water the valley of Shittim. Egypt shall be a desolation and Edom shall be desolate wilderness. For the violence against the children of Judah, because they have shed innocent blood in their land. But Judah shall dwell forever, and Jerusalem from generation to generation. For I will cleanse their blood that I have not cleansed, for the Lord dwells in Zion. Hmm. Well, basically it all kind of fits together, I think. Because that's where we are. It's like describing it. Um... So let's let's um pop back to this and then we'll go back to that in a minute, okay? Um, so twenty seven. So I read twenty seven, okay? So um, this is and he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week, and in the midst of the week he shall cause the sacrifice and oblation to cease, and for the overspreading of abominations he shall make it desolate even unto the consummation, and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. You know, in general, you know, you kind of get it. It does make sense in general. But, um, there, you know, trying to understand who uh, the details of it is kind of hard. You know, if you don't know Hebrew, like, so I, I, so here's what I did today. I looked it up in the Hebrew. I looked it up in, um, interlinear. Well, interlinear, I don't, you know, I mean, it's kind of backwards. You have to kind of figure out what it says. It doesn't really say it in order because it's literally reading what the words say in English, you know? So it, I didn't get what I was looking for. What I want to know. Oh, I know what I was doing. Okay. So somebody today that I listening, I'm not going to talk about the particular video, but there was a video I was listening to that for the first time, I'd never heard this before. I don't know if you guys have ever heard this, but that at the beginning of this scripture, that verse 27, this person said, the Lord revealed to this person that the he at the beginning of this scripture is Jesus. So this would read, and Jesus shall confirm the covenant with many, and then for one week, but that's not, wait till you see what this actually says. And Jesus shall confirm the covenant with many, um, and in the midst of the week, he, Jesus shall cause the sacrifice and oblation to cease. Now, what this does is it kind of explains part of it, but it doesn't explain the whole scripture, okay? So I do see what he's saying, because he says that the Lord showed him this basically means Jesus died on the cross. Um, so, of course, his covenant was the new covenant in his blood so that he was the last sacrifice. So there doesn't need to be any more sacrifice. He put an end to sacrifice and oblation to cease for the overspreading of abomination. Da, da, da. Okay. So I know what he's saying, but it doesn't answer the question of this. Now, watch this. Check this out. And this is going to be really cool. So now this is what we've always read. The week in there. Why, where did they even get a week? Okay, where do they get weak? I, I don't know where they get weak. And um, I know the other translations are all very similar. I, I've never found a translation that's, that's super different from this. Okay, now, Aslan, who teaches Hebrew, 
um, broke it down. I mean, you guys, he's taught, he knows the letters. Like, he knows how to even break it down by letters and understand exactly what it's saying, okay? So, yes, dear. So, so um, anyway, so he broke it down for us so that we could understand it better. And, oh, my gosh, I mean, this makes so much more sense. A the actual understanding of the actual Hebrew makes so much more sense than a, the regular English translation, okay? So listen to this. And he shall confirm a covenant with the many for one seven. But in the middle of the seven, he shall cause the sacrifice and grain offering to cease. And on the wing, as a desolator, abominations, even until the end. And that which was decreed shall be poured on the desolator. You guys hear that very often? I don't. That's pretty darn, I mean, a much more understandable than reading it the other way. So, now reading it here, it let, so if the beginning is, is Jesus, okay, so, and Jesus shall confirm, if that's the case, okay, uh, a covenant with many and he because of his death and resurrection on, on death on the cross and resurrection shall cause the sacrifice and grain offering to cease okay so i get that but that doesn't explain what one seven means now here's what let me tell you why i was excited about this because people who have translated the bible why why do they feel that it had to be a week why did where did they even get weak okay and if anything why didn't it say seven years like they think okay so you know this is what this is what gets confusing why is it why is it that man thinks that he can just go ahead and and put in what he thinks it is all right so when you just go back to the original hebrew and it just it's very clear many for one Seven. So what I get out of this is one set of seven, whatever it is. So it would be one set of seven weeks or one set of seven days or one set of seven years. Okay. Yes, exactly. Cam, you have to go back to the, to the Hebrew I, because that's how you get the real understanding of it. You know, because not all the English translations are right on there. It's, it's people's, a lot of times they're, their understanding of it. That's why you know there's I mean? so much striving and contentions in the church right now. Exactly. And so many different denominations because not, everybody's not looking towards the Hebrew letters. They're not That's looking right. towards the word. Exactly. You know, and looking into it further. Right. So, um, so that's why I was so excited to see this. It made so much more sense to me. So what I really thought about was if it just says one seven, that first of all, what I love about God's simplicity is he leaves it open for him so that we have to seek him and say, Father, Holy Spirit, Jesus, help me. What does this mean? What do you mean by one seven? So you gotta seek him and listen for his still small voice so he can tell you what that means. Not, not you know, as a, one of the, excuse me, not one of the million different translations ask the lord what that means you know what i mean you know what i mean 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 okay so what i was excited about this um back to what i was going to say because what that do you guys remember i was telling you about that tim foster a few years ago was doing a breakdown of um this word that this sister had gotten about this and about the tribulation and that she got because remember let's remember god says if I had not shortened the days, there would be no flesh alive. Now, when he says shorten the days, there's no um, specific way in that that he tells us he's going to shorten them. Okay, so he's God. He is supernatural. He's outside of time. He can do whatever he wants. And what the Lord showed me is that he's literally kind of uh, squishing it. And he also confirmed it with uh, Julie Wedby. So Julie Wedby saw had the word um i think in may and the lord said she's he was compressing time 
on our behalf. All right. And when, when I, when I read that, I saw the vision. Now God's always shown me how, when he's, because he's outside of time, he's always shown me time in a timeline. Okay. So what I saw was he, one hand, one of his hands on right now and one of his hands at the end of time. And he's literally compressing it and pushing it together to be shorter. Okay. Now, you know, you, they'll, you'll hear the argument. Yeah. Well, it says three and a half years. That says three and a half years, but God also said he's going to shorten it. So is he shortening that three and a half years? Do you see what I'm saying? We have to be open to whatever he's showing us is I what I'm so. saying. So I'm going to shorten it to tomorrow for all I care about. Yeah, no doubt. We'd be very happy. <laughs> yeah, so, I'm ready. So now this Tim Foster video, Tim Foster broke it down. I don't have it in front of me, but he did this uh, a video about this girl who had a vision about a seven week tribulation. And in that seven weeks, every week was, there was two judgments per week during that, those hours. So during those seven weeks is when the first fruits, we will be out bringing people into Christ, or bringing people back to Christ, like bringing them back into the fold. So there's gonna be the first rounders, we're gonna be transfigured, we're gonna be prepared, and we're gonna have glorified bodies and be ready sent back here so we'll be outside of time within time and then we're going to go help the second rounders the rest of the body of christ get themselves right with god get themselves in line with jesus christ get them ready and then they're going to be uh, going up with jesus so they have to be prepared they got to get refined that's why they have to go through the tribulation so that they can get that stuff burned off that silver has got to be refined. You got to burn dross. off the dross. You got to get that tarnish off the silver. You know, you got, it's got, he's got to clean it up. You know, we can't go out outside of time dirty. You know, we got to be clean, you know? So that's why, that's why they got to do that. But that's why he's sending us in for them. He's sending us in to help them, to help them not take the mark of the beast, to help them get their hearts right, to allow him to, um, cru uh, cru Crucify the flesh and to um, others who are not um, yeah, to crucify the circumcise flesh. their hearts to circumcise their hearts to get their hearts cleaned and get all the that gook out of there you know and, and clean it all up. Um, so anyway, um, so this woman had this uh, this that vision and she's talking about the seven weeks and so during that time we're going to be in there we're going to be helping these people you know helping them come to God and um, or helping them come back. Because most of them, you know, it's all within the church, you know, um, because the judgment of God, judgment comes first to the house of God. But anyway, so back to the scripture. So when it says one seven, does that mean seven weeks? So that's why when this person, sorry, when this person gave this explanation that that would be Jesus, then this doesn't make any sense. But in the middle of the seven, he shall cause like, what's in the middle of the seven. There's no explanation of that. So I don't really understand. It doesn't, to me, I, I mean, it could be, I see what that person's saying, but I don't, it doesn't, he didn't explain, I hate to say he or she, but this person did not explain the entire scripture as including what they were saying about he being Jesus. Okay. So I'm just throwing that out there. So you guys can take this to the Lord and ask him, is this he Jesus or is this he the Antichrist? You know what I mean? Yeah, but Cam, remember, Jesus says he's going to, God says he's going to shorten the time. He says, if I didn't shorten it, there would be no flesh alive. So Julie Webby had the word that he's compressing time on our behalf. So is he squishing that three and a half years into seven weeks or into whatever he's squishing it into? You see what I'm saying? Seven to three point five. I get it. I get it. That's because I thought of that too. That's always a possibility. But I just, I'm, you know, we'll see. We'll see. Um, but anyhow. So okay. So that's. I just wanted to throw that out there. It's something we're studying. I'm not like you know. I love. I love our sister uh, Jeannie. She, she's like you know what. If you don't know, tell them you don't know. And I'm telling you right now. This is something we're studying. But I wanted to bring it up. And I also with this. I want to say, you know, I, I, in the last few videos, I talked a lot about them preparing to build the third temple and stuff. Understand you guys, not, no, <laughs> sorry, any water, hold on. Okay. No Christian 
should ever be excited about the third temple. Please, please, there should be no Christian ever. If you belong to Jesus Christ, you should never be excited there's a third temple. That is absolute abhorrent. It, it's denying what Jesus Christ did for us. Okay, we don't want a third temple. However, we need to pay attention to them building the third temple because that is the sign that everything's beginning. You know what I'm saying? So, um, anyway, so I want to make sure everybody knows out there, we got to stick to the, to the spirit of God and not to man. And yes, I know. I, I saw what you said. Yes, Cam. Thank Yeah, me too. That's where I stand too. I just stay open to the whole, what the Holy Spirit wants to show us because we don't want to get caught up in the religion of it, you know, but we take all the pieces into consideration, you know, and ask him to help us. But, um, anyhow, so, um, so I wanted to make the point across to make sure all of you guys are, are looking at it in a fleshly way. So all of these puzzle pieces we're showing you, the fact that they already got this peace deal going and now Israel's ready to split the land. Um, you know, all of this stuff is happening, but I, we can't think of this in a fleshy kind of way. We can't get excited about this third temple. That's not a good thing, you know, but it's, we need to keep pay attention because that's the sign that we're here. Okay. So, okay. Excuse me. That said, um, I guess that's about as deep. Now, Joel three, I be, you know what? Um, overcomer, we will do another video. We're going to do a little study on this ourselves and come together with what your question is. And then we'll do a separate video on that. If that's okay. Just because we weren't, I haven't had time to read through it and connect it with everything yet. Um, I do, you know, at least the way you're wanting to see how it connects, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So let me pray on that and let us kind of talk about it and then we'll do a separate video on it and we'll do it like a Bible study. Okay. Does that sound cool? So we'll take care of it that way. But, um, so I'm just going to jump ahead just cause we didn't want to keep this too long. So I'm just going to jump ahead and we're going to do some, uh, some, a few, just a few headlines and, uh, a couple of messages. I'm just going to read some, um, titles of some messages cause I don't want it to go too long. Um, but this, I wanted to bring up real quick. Uh, um, we, uh, you all know Juanita. Well, she had sent us a text and said that she was told by the Lord that war will start in Belarus. Okay. So we need to understand something's going on over there. Um, now I was hearing about this, but I didn't really know what it was all about until she texted me and we started looking into this last night. So look at this headline. Report, Belarus president says, no new election until you kill me. Like, what? Okay, so here's what we did. We looked into it, and, and I got a few websites here. I'll send, I'll put all these links in the description. You can, oh, this is Belarus, by the way, just so in case you guys don't know, is right here. So it's on the border of Russia, the border of Ukraine, the border of Poland, and the border of Lithuania and Lat Lat Latvia. Now, um, Poland is where we're moving. We've already moved troops there to Poland. So something's building here that they're not talking about this very much. Okay. They're not really explaining a lot. So we did a little research and, um, it turns out that the, they want to, they want a new president. Well, let me tell, let me put it this way. The official story that mainstream lying media tells us. So we don't really know the true story, but this, let me tell you what the official story is. They are saying that the people of Belarus don't want their president anymore. So they had an election and they elected this new guy who supposedly is who they really want. Well, the president has challenged that and he's not going to put up with it apparently. And he says, I'm not going to step down because I don't think, I think it was rigged. I think this election was rigged. So this is why he's saying, I'm not leaving unless you kill me. I mean, that's the stupidest thing I've ever seen. That's ridiculous. So, um, obviously there's a very weird situation over there that we need to keep our eyes on. So now we have somebody who's letting us know God's showing them, uh, Juanita, um, has let us know that God's showing her that it's going to start in Belarus. So whatever's going on over there, keep your eyes out guys. So it must be that that's going to trigger something. All right. So we're, we're, we got our eyes on that, but, uh, 
This real quick, and I know Dan has not seen this, so I want Dan to see this. I, I ain't gonna do this. Okay, so um, I'm gonna play this. I want you, first I'm gonna play Dabu's video, and then I'm gonna play a video that I found on uh, YouTube. So this is nuts. I want you to understand, I've been there, down to New York City a bunch of times, okay? We live plenty, we live like three hours north, so we're like far away, but um, you need to understand this is the most abnormal thing you will ever see. Yeah, you don't see that. You do not see this, okay? I'm going to play this. Watch this. Oh, I'll wait, leave a link. link. In New York, in mass. As I've described this before as being like the movie Escape from NYC, there are people just leaving in droves. The same thing happening in California. Nobody wants to be there. And this is coming from all kinds of different districts. I want you to say, in case you can't see this, that is Saks Fifth Avenue. Uh, that's big. Like the Saks Fifth Avenue on Fifth Avenue. Uh, hello? Close. People are closing Close? up shops. They're Close? done. They're, they're finished. What the, is this? The rich people are leaving. And, it's, and it's, that's why Cuomo, the governor of New York, uh, has been asking people that are rich to come back. He said he'd even throw them a barbecue. Well, uh... I don't trust Como as far as I could throw him. I don't think any rich person should tr uh, trust somebody who's going to put sick people in nursing homes neither and kill them. You know, 6,000 uh, nursing home victims, they said at first, but now it's uh, come down to a bigger number, which is 11,000. So. Now, I, wanted, I, wanna, I want you guys to understand, we live in this state, and we didn't know anything about this. Yeah. Nothing. We live here. Now we're three hours north, granted, but they don't, they haven't talked about it at all. We haven't heard a single thing. So I went, I'm like, what, what, what's going on down there? All right, so listen to what he's saying. Cities, boroughs, neighborhoods, rich and poor, people are packing up and getting out. Some of the rich that had their high rises were taking big losses and selling them just to get out. Those that had rental properties doing the same. People that were just living there doing the same. Many of these areas, five different neighborhoods, closed less than four deals in the past month. And they're saying that there is at least a 30% drop in people coming in on average to every neighborhood all throughout New York. Okay, so I'm going to pause that there because um, I don't want to play the whole thing because we got a lot of other stuff to share. But <clears throat> so you see, now we watched this video last night, and then I'm like, all right, I need to see more on this. Watch this. I, 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 I my mouth was on the floor the whole time. I can't believe what I'm seeing here. Check this out. And Dan hasn't seen this yet. Look. The media did not show. Look at everything. Everything's boarded. Even the hotel is boarded up. Look. This is all Manhattan, boarded up. Have you ever seen Manhattan look like this? No. The media will not report this. Look at Coach. Look at Manhattan. I'm just driving. Not one window left. Look at Microsoft. Gone. The media does not show it because this is what happened. Here's the Rolex store. Right there is the Rolex store. Which was robbed, by the way. Look at it. The last Everything BLM riot. boarded up. Zara, boarded up. Ferragamo, gone. Look, everything's empty. Look at the shops. Everything. Look at the blocks. Look. Everything's boarded. Manhattan is boarded up. Look. They don't want to show this to you people. No. Free. Aster? Wow. Unbelievable. St. Patrick's Cathedral, not boarded up. Get yes. on the windows. <laughs> Look at this, folks. This is Saks Look Fifth at Avenue. This. Look. Boarded up from end to end. They put I Bob Wire. Check it out. Bob Wire. The media Bob is all Wyatt. here. Look at the media. Look at the security. Security standing outside. Ten guys. Look at this. Puma. Done. Look. Everything gone. Welcome to Manhattan. Guy just went through the red light. Look at that. Boom. Yeah, nobody, nobody cares. cares. Yeah. Ted that's Baker. There. Gone. H and M. AT and T. All the stores, look, look, folks, everywhere you see boards, windows are gone. I I am so blown away watching this. I, I can't even, I don't even know what to say. I can't, I can't believe we never heard any of this, okay? Now. Do you think the mainstream media is going to tell you anything? No. 
No. No. Now, let me tell you what I see in this. What do we know is coming to Manhattan? Uh, yeah. What do we know is about to go down? So, why do you think a bunch of uh, very rich uh, stores or very rich people? Because let me tell you, he's going down Fifth Avenue. Fifth Avenue is the high, high, high class part of New York. Well, okay. isn't that where uh, Trump Tower is? Oh, yeah. Fifth isn't Avenue? Trump Tower on Fifth Avenue? I hmm. believe so. Hmm. So, yeah. So, I'm thinking they are preparing for a particular event that's about to go down in New York City. That's what it looks like to me. So, um, I can tell you right now, that is unprecedented that there's nobody even walking the streets. This place is so busy. Normally, you can't even walk. You, you have to pass like a thousand people just walking down these sidewalks. I've been there a million times. I, I've Not only been times, there but... once, and I tried to say hi to everybody. There's too yeah, many Yeah, you try to talk to people. Yeah, you don't talk to people. Yeah, anymore. they don't want to say hi. <laughs> but anyway... <laughs> So yeah, this is ridiculous crazy. I, I was blown away when I saw that. So eyes on New York. I have a feeling something's about to go down. And California's probably doing the same. Chicago, yep. the same. Philadelphia, the same. All these big towns yep. and, and cities. You know, uh, one of the warnings that we got in through our ministry, uh, I don't remember what brother it was, but he said, get out of the big cities. The Lord yes. is saying, get out of the big cities. Get out of the big we cities. We started warning people, get out of the big cities, you know, but are people listening? No. But well, I'm they sure actually, they are in here. Some are listening. Some, some are. are. That's good. You know, but. I'm glad they're leaving. <laughs> you know, it's time. It's, if if you're glad. in a big city and you can get out. Any way you can, get Absolutely. out. I'm now, telling you now. Now, this, of course, isn't to cause fear. You no, know, we don't want I'm you not to be causing scared. fear. I'm just telling you that's wisdom. Wisdom yeah. tells you to run. You know, if, if, if you got a truck coming down and you're in a small alley and it's looking like it's going to try to run you over, are you going to sit there and just let it run you over? You're going to run from it. Right. So for those of you who can't leave the city or you don't feel led to leave the city, just Pray. Stay there. Pray. Pray. Ask God, Be uh, obedient. Ask God for his protection. Ask him for your protection. Ask, for, ask him for his protection. And trust him. He's going to take care of you. You know? And you should be ready for whatever he wants you to do. And that's all. Okay? So, to get out of this, um, you know, this part of the, uh, what we're trying to tell you about the big cities, I just want to tell you big earthquakes. Um, okay. Just to get it out of the way. Do you mind? Just big earthquakes. Go ahead. Real quick. Go ahead. There was a 6.9 and a 6.8 in magnitude today in Indonesia, right beside each other. Uh, another 6.6 .6 in San Pedro, Philippines. Uh, a 5.0 in Alaska, in Perryville. And just moments ago, uh, another 4.0 in Willis, California. Um, so that's very significant there, and that's going to cause some movement as well. So um, I've been watching California for a time, as most people know, and, and uh, if you're following what I'm doing in the chat room, um, I'm watching Idaho as well with the uh, earthquakes in Chalice, Idaho. And uh, so just uh, watching, you know, this is what we do. We watch Luke 2111, you know, there'll be various earthquake, earthquakes in various places, and we're seeing it. Yep. We're seeing it. Big and uh, absolutely. So stuff is shaking. Um, New Madrid, get ready for New Madrid because look yeah, at what's New happening Madrid's, with Israel. They're not man. reporting anything on it, but yeah. they're having they're moving. smaller earthquakes. They're moving. Um, okay, so this is obviously Drudge Report. Um, this is this is just distraction, guys. This is, please don't fall, don't underst understand. That's just a joke. This, I don't even, I ignore that stuff. Um, okay, here's what caught my eye. Senate panel concludes Russia interfered in 2016 election. Something's building there. There's something that, you know, I, I saw this picture and it just grabbed me. I felt very led to, to check that out. So I opened up, let me see, I think this is this uh, Russia con, yes. Trump campaigns Russia, Trump campaigns Russia contacts, grave threats. I, Senate says. Let me see what this says. Okay. The Trump campaign's interactions with Russian intelligence services during the 2016 presidential election posed a grave counterintelligence threat. 
a Senate panel concluded Tuesday as it detailed how associates of Donald Trump had regular contact with Russians and expected to benefit from the Kremlin's help. Hmm. You know, I, I, this is, see, I don't do, I, I don't, I don't care about the politic part of it. I want to see what they're doing under the surface. So this is why I pick out articles like this as God leads me. There's something more here. There's something this is leading to. So I'm going to keep an eye on this and I'm going to do a little more digging and see what else I can find out. But I know this is, this is something heading to war. This is definitely something heading to war and I can see it in the spirit and I'm just going to pray on it and see where the where else the Lord leads me. What are our articles? If anybody else has more info on this, please uh, pop it over to email, our email at um, grafted in, grafted in team Jesus 222 at gmail.com. Okay. Um, and this one, um, I'm going to play some of this. It's a uh, seven minutes. How many minutes are we at now? 35. I don't want to have it too long. Yeah, so too I won't, you know what? I won't play it just cause it's kind of long, but, um, it's seven minutes, but, um, basically blockchain, they have, they are now making with all of the banks guys, the banks are now allowing you to have a blockchain account at the bank. So it is turning into real money. Okay. Real usable, exchangeable funds. F-U-N-D-S, funds. So, this is the beginning of one world money system. Okay, understand this is a big deal. This is, has to do with the mark of the beast and everything. And they, t when he talks in here, he's talking about the, how they're working the money thing. And it, I went right back to that new president of United Allied States. Excuse me. He talked all about this. He talked all about how the, the banks are... Uh, are going to allow the funds in the banks now and they're all excited about it. I'm, I wouldn't be surprised if that guy is like the financial side of the mark of the beast. I don't know. Just throwing that out there. So we're going to keep an eye on all of this guys. Um, I'll put all these links in the description box so you'll have them. Um, and this guy, I'm not going to read, play it. It's really short, but he basically in a nutshell is saying full force martial law is coming to New Zealand. And, um, understand it's going to head to america too it's it's going to go all over the world so because antichrist is coming and get ready because there's going to be another break, uh lockdown and it's going to be permanent we're not going to go anywhere well for some okay? people for some people yeah for some people it'll be permanent yeah okay dear <laughs> not for me yeah dan's yeah nope. dan's being ridiculous I but go anyway, where i want we're going to actually get transfigured by that side. i fought for my but freedom we'll sorry i'm we'll going see. where i want when i want how okay, i want what dear. do i want Honey, relax. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> I'm just uh, anyway, that's how I feel. Death Valley re <clears throat> Death Valley in Arizona. I believe it's in Arizona, right? Let me take a sip. Sorry, I need water again. Death Valley reports world's hottest temperatures on record in eighty nine years. This was yesterday. Do you know it's a hundred it was hundred and thirty degrees? 130 degrees. You could fry an egg or two with that. Yeah, that's on the nuts. sidewalk. Hello. I'm on your mailbox. That's a sign of the end, man. That's crazy. That that kind of heat will make uh, plastic mailboxes melt. Yeah, and that's 130 degrees Fahrenheit. So do the math for the Celsius. <laughs> I know it's different. Yes, I know. Cam and overcomers. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I don't. I, that's right. I, I don't Amen. not agree with you. I just. You know, have freedom it, in Christ. Yes, dear. he's the one that created of everything. Of course, of course. Not it's them. Fine. Not their laws. Yes, of course. I'm. I'm just. I don't want okay, to make just a big deal anyways. out of it. Okay. So, all right. So we got <laughs> wars on the horizon. Eric Espinoza. Um, this is a heavy message. I actually played this message uh, last night in the live stream, but I didn't record it because my my live stream the recording got messed up. So this is a really great call. I'm going to leave it. I'm not going to play it, but if you guys want to check it out, it's a heavy message. War is here. Um, and then this one, brace yourselves. Um, be prepared basically door to door guys, door to door soldiers. Just like she said, you're going to, this is long, but it's heavy duty. All of it door to door. They're going to be uh, forcing forced vaccinations, forced everything, guys. This is martial law, medical martial law. 
and um, and then of course we got four 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 prophecy. There's so many on here. I would love to read all of these, but I just can't. There's just too many. But very powerful words. The Lord's just speaking to his kids, guys. He's speaking to us. He's letting us know what's coming. Anyhow, praise God. So I think that's it for tonight. Just wanted to mention uh, Portland, Oregon, how bad it's getting there. And uh, two people have been beat. One has died uh, from being beat by BLM protesters. So, you know, the whole BLM movement was great at first. I believed in it. But now BLM has turned to terrorism, you know, and that's yeah. what I see. And, you know, the original BLMists who really did believe Black Lives Matter, you know, are probably trying to fight these uh, anarchists, as I call them, people. Uh, but these people are demon infested, okay? These people that are out there doing stuff like that are hurting God's creation. One of the things I did when I came out of bouncing, when the, when the Lord took me out of bouncing bars and took me into his arms, he told me, do not touch my creation like you've touched them before. That means I can't hit anybody unless the Lord allows me to hit them. And so I have not since that time and won't. And these people to be doing what they're doing to hurt people like they're doing in Portland, Oregon, and other places. And yeah, I'm talking to you, BLM and Antifa. I'm not afraid of you. Oh, I, I, have my, I have my God on my side. And he loves me and he protects me. But you guys need to come to the Lord. You need to know Jesus Christ. Because without Jesus, you're going to perish. You will die. You don't want to die without Jesus Christ. I'm saying this because I love you. Not because I hate you. But because I love you and I want you to be saved. I want you to be born again. I want you to be baptized. I want you to come into the kingdom of God and know him. And that's all I'm going to say about that. Amen. Praise the Lord. Um, <clears throat> I, I, you know, I'd like to go in many other directions with that and just say, you know, that a lot of them are paid and not real, yep. but and there are still people and there are still people who need Jesus. And I don't know, some of them may have Jesus, some of them may not, but you I guys, he's right. That. They need Jesus. Anyhow. Without them, you'll perish. That's right. Anyhow, okay, guys. Well, I guess that's it for tonight. So we love you guys. Um, and, of course, those who are on our call can stay on. But for now, we're ending the live stream. All right. Um, Blue, love you, sister. Cam, love you, sister. Overcomer, love you. Um, love all you guys. God bless you. And big hugs to everybody. And we'll be back as the Lord leads. Okay? Bye-bye. <laughs>